Okay, good morning class. So today we're looking at geometry workbook on page 25. Did I give you 25 and 26 for homework, no? Why well, give you so much homework? You do well, yes. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. So if you guys do well, it looks like I'm doing my job. But you guys want to be fired, that's why you're getting what you're getting for your maths teacher. <laughs> but anyway, this is how it goes. We are told that in the diagram, CB is perpendicular to PD. Perpendicular means 90. Then we are told that AB is equal to AD. It is marked in the diagram. Then we are told that AE is uh, uh, parallel to BC. So from there we know alternate angle. So now from here we know that E2 is 90. Yes. Alternate. Oh, sorry, sorry, E1 is 90. E2 is 90 because angles on a straight line. Okay. The question says prove that AE, which is this line here, bisect BD. What does that mean? Cuts in half, no? Which means to say this length is equal to that. Okay. And, right, where do we start? What do we do? What are we going to do here? We're going to prove that the two triangles are congruent. By proving that these two triangles are congruent, then all the corresponding angles and all the corresponding sides are equal. equal. Yes. So let's go. In triangle ABE and triangle ADE. We always try and get it in the right order from the, from the beginning. Right, so what can we say, people? AB is equal to AD. Why? Give N, yes. A is common, yes. And from here, everybody else is quiet. I must know the story. Yes? AE? Who told you congruency? I never even told you that, that you must say that's better. B1, yes? I just told you earlier. B1? Is equal to E1. A1 is equal to E1. Why? Not A. Surround you guys. No, no, not you guys. Okay. It's equal to 90. Why? Alternate angles. What? AE is parallel to B. Now what? E2 is equal to? 90, which is equal to E1. Why? Angles are the same. So now we have button that is wrong. Not so. So is that enough to conclude congruency? Did we use the 90? Did we use the hypotenuse? Yes. Did we use another side? Yes. So therefore, triangle ABE is congruent to triangle. A, D, C, D, E. Why? All right. Have you answered the question? No. no. Therefore, A, E, by C, um, B, D, and? No. Number six, I'm here. You know what I'm missing? I'm in the conclusion already. I say since, I say the obvious first. Since BE is equal to DE. Where am I getting this from? From here. Not so. Since that is the case. And why is that the case? Because triangle ABE is congruent to triangle ADE. Therefore, 
AD by 6, which means to say cut in half PDF. It will have costed me one mark. Okay? But one mark is nothing to you guys, isn't it? You know what it's about? The pennies. You know, the small ones. The little marks. And when you look again, you look to the back and then the little marks are actually 40 out of 50 that's lost. Huh? Right? Are we still on page 25? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Right, then you get D. PQR is, is a quadrilateral with PS being parallel to QR. PQR is a quadrilateral. So what does a quadrilateral mean? It's a four-sided figure. Okay. With PS being parallel to PR. So your alternate angles are equal. No, alternative is that too, yeah? And so in theta you can go with. And we are told that PS is equal to QR. Prove that PS. No. Prove that PQ is equal to RD. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to prove that this is equal to that? Pythagoras here. So which triangles are we working in? In triangle PQR. So it's PQR. What's the order of the sign? R is P. So what can we say? What can we say about these two triangles, people? Come on. PR is a common sign, yes. PR is a common sign. Next. PS is equal to Q. Why? It's given, yes. One more. Either angle or side. Sorry? R1 is equal to uh, P2. Why? Alternate angle. So alternate angles with PS being parallel to Q. So therefore, triangle PQR is similar to triangle R is Why? Side, angle, side. Ever answer the question? No. Therefore, PQ is equal to R is Why is that the case? First triangle PQR is congruent to triangle R is I'm going to fold this in here. I might need it in the next calculation. Okay. Any issues here? So let's take this off. Parallel to Aris. People, if if na, if PQ was parallel to Aris, then what what would you get? What could we have concluded? Okay, you're jumping the gun, but yes. What else? If this line were given parallel, what could we have concluded? P1, yes. So you got to? So if you, if you are given that those lines were parallel, then I would have concluded that P1 is equal to R2. Why? Alternate angles, no? With um, PQ being parallel to R is where it's R. Now, the converse, which is the reverse. For the converse, 
we are going to now prove, if we can prove that P1, if we now can prove that P1 is indeed equal to P2, if we can prove that is the case, then those lines has to be parallel. On what account? Alternate angles is equal. Not so. So, if you look at this here, you all agree that's alternate angles. Not so? But are they equal? No. So, he says, are these lines parallel? No. However, if you've got this here, if that angle was equal to this angle, then what can we conclude? So, these lines are parallel. You guys understand? All right. Now, don't we know that R1 is equal to R2? And where are we going to get that from? From here. We know that angle P is equal to angle R. Angle P of this triangle is equal to angle R of that triangle. Can you see that? From here we also can conclude that angle Q is equal to angle S. Nice. What else do we know? That angle R of this triangle is equal to angle P of that triangle, which we have used in order to prove that anyway. You guys understand? So let's go. Since, we state the obvious, since angle P1 is equal to R2, what's the reason here? Because triangle PQR is congruent to triangle RSP. Okay, so that is the case. Therefore, PQ is parallel to SO. Why? Because alternate angles are equal. So you, when we prove that lines are parallel, we say alternate co-interior um, alternative to corresponding angles are equal and co interior angles are supplementary. You have your must go and PQ is parallel to SR. Why? Because we're actually proving it. You guys understand? So you can't use it then. Okay? So again, we see that the angle P1 is equal to angle R2. Why? Because the two triangles are congruent. Therefore, the PQ is parallel to SR. Why? Alternate angles are equal. Alright, take down what you need. And then the last one. Why is PQR is a parallelogram? What's the properties of a parallelogram? Two pairs of opposite sides are equal. So we could have said, there's a parallelogram, why? Because the two pairs of opposite sides are equal. That's number one. Or, what else do we notice? Well, what's the other property of a parallelogram? Two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. You see, that's parallel and that's parallel. You see that? Number three, what's the third property? Opposite angles are equal. So Q is equal to S, why? Two triangles are congruent. Then, that is equal to that, you can prove that as well. So you can go with that fact. The third one. The fourth one is? Diagnosis, no diagnosis. And I want you to add this as a note thing to prove, to prove um, a parallelogram. You're going to go with those four, or either one uh, of those four properties. No? Or one um, P of opposite sides um, P equal and parallel. Okay, so to prove a parallelogram, you can prove five ways. The four that you have been exposed to all the time, as well as one pair of opposite sides equal and parallel. So if you, like this year, that was given equal and parallel, then I didn't even have to go with any other of the proofs. Okay?
This is going here, go one back. I'm going to just use with what was asked for. So how do we answer this? We say since. You'll see that in a proof, uh, I always start with since. You don't have to, okay? So since a and a PS is parallel to you are. Where did we get that? Here. Okay? And we got PQ a parallel to SR. Where did we get this from? Prove it. We'll just prove that now. Okay? So therefore, um, PQRS is a form of parallelogram. Why? Two pairs of opposite sides are no. I'm using the fact that it is parallel. Unless I have said, if I have, uh, maybe I've said that uh, PS is equal to QR. Why? Given. And then PQ is equal to uh, SRY. Proven. Therefore, PSRQ is a parallelogram. Why? Because two pairs of opposite sides were equal. You understand? So it depends what I've stated. Okay. So now page 25? 26. So you have been told that ABCD is an isosceles trapezium. People, what's the property? What's the properties of a an isosceles trapezium? One pair of opposite sides on? Parallel, yes. And one pair of opposite sides on? Equal. It's an isosceles trapezium. Okay. Prove that. In number one. That AC is equal to AC is equal to B. So how are we going to do that? Yes, congruency is. You see, you're doing congruency all the time. But which triangles are we going to work? Triangle A, B, C, and triangle. D, B, C. You see that? If I forget, for an associate trapezium, I forgot to mention that as well. If this is an associate trapezium, those angles are also equal. Okay. So, what can we say? The two triangles, we know that AB is equal to uh, D, D, C, Y, because um, uh, A, B, C, D is an isosceles trapezium. Then, we know that this angle is equal to that angle. Why? Because it's an isosceles trapezium. And then, this here, your common side between the two triangles. Can you see that, people? Okay, so let's go. We in triangle ABC and triangle ABC, so it's D uh, CB. What can we say? We're saying that AB is equal to DC. Why? It's given that the uh, ABCD is an isosceles trapezium. A triangle trapezium. Okay, so that is equal. Then we're saying that the base angles of the isosceles trapezium is equal. So it's going to be uh, ABC is equal to DCB. Why? And the base angles of isosceles 
Trapezium. Right. And then we say that BC is a common side. Since it's in both, both triangles, miss. Okay, so therefore, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DC. Why? So you side angle side. So with that, you can conclude, therefore, AC, AC is equal to DB. Therefore, AC is equal to uh, DB. Why? Because triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DC. Okay. Number two. Number two, we are asked to prove that um, BE is equal to C. Okay, so if, if, if that was the case, if that was equal, then this angle here would have been equal to that angle. Not so. So in order for us to prove that those lines are equal, we are actually going to prove that B2 is equal to uh, C2. Okay. But we know that B2 is equal to D2. Not so. Why? Alternate angles. Not so. These lines are parallel, right? Yeah. Sorry? Yes. Okay. Otherwise, you would have to go with congruency in this triangle. Okay, so uh, we know that is equal to that. This angle is vertically opposite thing. I need one more. Concurrency this way. PD and this way. Okay? So uh, that's your common side. Then uh, this is equal, which we already know. One more. This is equal, yeah. Okay, because I say for argument's sake, this is x. That's 180 minus x, not so coincident. And this is going to be, that's x, because they are equal, so that's 180 minus x. So that's also equal. You all agree with that? With that, if I can prove those two triangles are congruent, which is going to make B1 equal to C1. Not so. But, we know that this angle is equal to that angle. However, if that angle is equal to that angle, therefore this one has to be. And with that said, BE is equal to EC. I think this is far beyond your scope at this point. Okay? I'm not going to do it anyway, but don't look out for one like this in the exam. Okay? I, I wouldn't be that. Uh, 
What's his name to, to give you a one as an exam? Okay, but I, as I said, I'm going to do it anyway. That's why it took so long. I just thought maybe there's a maybe there is a, a quicker way than what I'm seeing. I'm just not seeing it now. Okay. Well, did anybody come with the easier way, Princess? Easier? No. All right. So let's go with it. So first thing. I'm going to prove congruency in this triangle. Okay, so in triangle uh, ABD and triangle uh, ABD, it's going to be D, C, no, ABD and D, C, A. Alright, so what do we say? We say in first step, AD, the common side. Okay. Then, um, AB is equal to DC. Why? Prove it. I can't say, given that the Nassau is the PZM again, but I said it already, so I just say prove it. And in the third case, is uh, a um, B A is e uh, B A D is equal to A D C. Okay. Okay. Why? Because it's given a triangle A B. Given that um, A B, C, D is an isosceles. Okay? So that is not equal. So this is enough to conclude congruency, so therefore triangle A, B, D is congruent to triangle uh, D, C, A. Why? Because A is side angle. Okay, so with that, we now can say that, therefore, uh, B1 is equal to C1. Why? Because a triangle ABD is congruent to the triangle ACA. Why? No, that is a great. So if that angle is equal to this angle, okay, then we know that Down a bit. We know that B1 plus B2, B1 plus B2 is equal to C1 plus C2. Where did we get that from? That was proven already. Proven about. No? However, look at this here. We know that B1 is equal to C1. So B1 is equal to C1. So if B1 is equal to C1, what can we say? We can say therefore B2 has to be equal to C2. Okay? So this angle is equal to that angle. So since that is the case, can you see? That is equal. Since that is the case, therefore, BE has to be equal to EC. Why? Because uh, sides opposite equal angles. Normally we use this uh, one that says angles opposite equal sides. This one is sides opposite equal angles. Okay. Again, people, this is way beyond what you need to do at this stage. Okay. And then the last one, number three, the question says, we must prove that AE, okay, so with that we have proven now that is equal to that. Okay? So now we must prove that AE is equal to DE. 
Okay, now we we are ready now. So we must prove that this part here is equal to, to that angle, to that length B. Okay. So at this point we already know that AC is equal to sorry, AC, why am I writing A E? A C is equal to B D. Where did we get this from? From number one. From one. So or I can say proven above. Okay. But A C is made up of A E as well as A C. B D is made up of in a classroom now during break. Thank you. D E plus E B. Can you all see that people? This length there is equal to that length. But this length is made up of A E and E C and that length is made up of B C and E D. Can you see that people? Now we have just proven we have just proven now that B E is equal to E C. Can you see that? We just proven that. So in conclusion, therefore, A E has to be equal to E. Okay. Is that the last of page 26? Huh? Where is this? Page 26. Okay, so let's do it quickly. Right, so we are told that PQR is, is a square. People, if it's a square, what do we know? Many things. All sides are equal, 90 degrees, opposite sides are parallel, uh, diagonals, and all of those things. If no diagonals, yes, they're going to be applicable here. We are told that G is the midpoint. So if G is the midpoint, that thing is equal to that thing. R is R. Then we are told that um, if it's the midpoint, R which means to say these lengths are equal. Not so? Why? Because that length is equal to that length. Let's prove that GP or PG uh, PG is equal to is if. Okay, so um, that's 90. 90. Now, this is also out of your scope. Okay. So, I'm not going to waste your time. So, for homework. For 27, 28. Okay, so uh, with regards to this question, as I said, it's out of your scope, but I'll do it anyway. So, uh, we have to prove that PG is equal to SF. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to prove congruence in these two triangles. Okay, so there's the one triangle. Oops, okay, so that's uh, all link. But anyway, those are the two triangles I'm going to prove congruence in. So I'm going to say in triangle, uh, P is G and triangle um, is um, R. So it is S, so R is in the middle. Uh, P, which is S, and G, which is F. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Well, the order could be missed But what you can say is that in this triangle here, in triangle, uh, P is G. Okay, and the other triangle stands like this. 
with uh, this is R, that is F1, and this is S1. This is P1, and this is G1. So what I'm saying is, angle S is equal to angle R is equal to me. Why? Because of the vertex angles 90 degrees in square. Okay. Then, we know that S, P S, which is this length here, is equal to this length here, which is uh, S R. Okay? So P S is equal to S R. Why? Because all sides equal in this square. Okay? All sides are equal in this square. And then lastly, um, we are seeing that that length is equal to that length. Okay? So uh, SG is equal to GR. Why? Because it's given that G is the midpoint. Okay? So that's going to get a one marking. Okay? Let's make it two because I'm going to get one marking. They get two there. Okay? Then we know that QF is equal to FR. Why? It's given that F is the midpoint. Of uh, Q. But it's not enough for us to make two markings. Firstly, we have to say, um, then we have to say that uh, QR is equal to SR. Now, if that is equal to this thing, then that, if that is a midpoint, those things have to be equal, which also has to be equal to this thing. Okay. So, therefore, um, QR. Is equal to S R. Why? Because all sides equal in the square. Okay. Which means to say that's also going to get two strokes through there. So that's a case of side angle side. Okay. So therefore, side angle uh, P is R is, is G. PSG is congruent to triangle. So I went through the one, then through the two, through the one, then through the two. So it's SR2. And what's the case of congruency then? Side angle side. Now, because that is the case, we prove congruency here now. Now we can conclude that PG has to be equal to uh, is, um, PG is equal to SF. Why? Because of congruency. So they say therefore uh, PG is equal to SF. Why? Because triangle PSG is congruent to triangle SR. Okay. And with that, we have completed page 26.